All right, welcome back. Hope you're having a good Monday morning so far. We surely are because the odds seem to be stacked in favour of the Bulls. Let's see, Manoj Murli Dharan of Relegate Broking is joining in now to help us prep for the day. And in a bit, we'll get some more corporate voices as well. Uh, Manoj, good morning. How are you feeling about the market? It's been consolidating for a really long time. Uh, and what are the stocks to watch today? Uh, good morning, Sonia. Uh, Sonia, I guess I'd like to throw some light on the quantitative analysis which is going on in something called as an uh, instrument selection, especially done by those guys, you know, the P-notes guys, where the cost of carry matters. Now, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, uh, if you see uh, the last budget, uh, even uh, there is concept of a hedge ratio, that is the amount of Nifty future which is used to hedge your position to the event. So that was almost 9, 9.5% and we saw the same this time also. So, if you remember last two months, the Nifty Futures has been trading at a premium of 100 to 120 odd points. Now, that is trimmed down to almost 20 to 25. So, there is a concept of cost of carry happening. So, the cost of carry is nothing but a simple way of understanding which instruments might be used. So, we believe that uh, lot, the Nifty has been in a range bound mode last three months because that instrument shift from the futures has gone with an option and that is exactly where we the VIX has fallen to a 12 and a half percent. So, but this time we believe, we believe that even on Friday, that is the last trading session, almost three, three and a half percent positioning has been taken. Now there are fair chances that the next quarter, this is not a short term view, the next quarter time, that is a three months time, we might see the nifty positioning on the future side to extend to almost a 1.4 crores. As of now, we hardly had one crore, you know, and the average is around 1.2. So what I'm trying to say, now there is a high chance that the Nifty might get uh, trending and there is a possibility that with 17,800, which is the weighted average price of the base happening in the last, let's say, five to six or days, till the time we do not close below spot of 17,750, there are chances that Nifty might break on the upside and the pivot of 18,100, if that is crossed, because FIs are short by almost 82.5% for this month of Feb, as well as I mentioned the hedge ratio. So we might see some traction more on the positive side. So given uh, all this data, looking into the instrument selection and the cost of carry, we believe that till the time 17,750 on the spot is respected, the buyer should be on the positive side. Intraday, yes, 17,750 to maybe 100 or 17,950 can be the range. But I believe that there is a possibility that Nifty might start trending and this would be some most important thing we need to take views from those side of FIs are classified as much. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Manoj. Morning. What about your stock picks? Uh, Nigel, I guess there are three stocks uh, where good uh, delivery based buying has happened and that is happening since October level. So the stock has not really crossed that. So one would be Tata Steel, I guess every time at 108 to 109, we have seen a good base building and we believe that there is a chance we might see the stock uh, bounce all the way to 140. So as of now, the call would be to go long on Tata Steel with the stock of 106. The target should be 114 on the stock. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Manoj. Have a good day and thanks for joining in. But we have a couple of more companies. Before that, Prakash Divan is still sitting by. I just wanted a comment from him. Uh, Prakash, I wanted your thoughts on, uh, you know, some of these stocks which have, of course, uh, delivered a good set of numbers on the capital goods side, whether it's ABB, there is BHEL, um, you know, a couple of others in the past. Thermax has won some orders as well. l and has been doing well. In this pocket, anything that you like? Okay, so this is this is actually the spot to be in, you know, uh, in, in terms of uh, if you look at the improvement in revenue, improvement in margins. Uh, after years, we've had this for the entire sector. There's no one-off in, in just one or two companies. Look at the numbers that Cummins reported. Look at now ABB. What, what's going to happen is that this will become the growth engine for leading this uh, capital expenditure across sectors in terms of this export orientation or whatever, Atma Nirbata, whatever you want to call it. But uh, capital goods is here to stay, and this is a long-term trend. It at least stays for about 24 months for sure. Uh, the best out of this, of course, happens to be Thermax and AVB, given their own advantages. But AVB probably could have uh, started getting discounted a bit at a premium, so you might not have that same risk reward. But I think Thermax has still a long way to go in terms of its uh, reset. So that's that's what we. And as a matter of disclosure, I do have exposure to these names so uh, look at look at them from a slightly longish perspective but i think for the next two years irrespective of where the market heads you'll probably see some very sharp earnings growth. okay all right uh, thanks a lot for that uh, prakash wishing you a good session ahead and also maybe you could tune into this conversation we're going to have with the management of jk lakshmi cement remember they reported a pretty much inline set of numbers the problem was margins didn't see a big improvement on a sequential basis 
Let's talk about it. It's seen a bit of a re-rating over the last one year or so, but let's find out what's the way ahead. Mr. Arun Shukla, President and Director at JK Lakshmi Cement, joins us on the show. Hi, Mr. Shukla. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, the numbers look pretty okay, uh, you know, pretty much in line. But as I mentioned, on the margin front, maybe, in fact, the street expected a little bit more expansion on a sequential basis. I'm referring to your standalone numbers. If you could tell us, why didn't that happen? Were you sitting on some high-cost inventory? And also, what is the targeted EBITDA per ton from year on? Go ahead, Mr. Shukla. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, I agree with you. I think we have been performing quite consistently in the past, you know, few quarters. And uh, uh, you uh, talked about, you know, realization target. I think uh, we are targeting at least, you know, 1,000 rupees per ton. That is what our target is. If you look at, you know, the improvement which we have done for the last uh, three, four quarters, I think the lead gap between the leaders and uh, you know jp lakshmi cement has dwindled and our effort is to be amongst you know top five companies in terms of every and uh, the kind of effort which we are taking which is more mm. towards kind of you know internal you know efficiency improvement be it you know uh, top line uh, levers or the uh, manufacturing costs i think uh, we are working quite uh, uh, incessantly and hopefully i think the kind of you know direction which we have taken Probably yes. will be you no know, inching towards you know thousand rupees per ton a bit, and uh, maybe uh, the next six to nine months time. <laughs> All right, Mr. Shukla, just to clear that point, uh, you know when we calculated your EBITDA per ton, we don't in, uh, include the other income. Uh, so for us, the numbers in the vicinity of around six hundred twenty, six hundred thirty rupees. I'm yeah. talking about the standalone EBITDA per ton. So when you're right. talking about this th thousand rupee uh, uh, odd number, you're referring to an improvement of around two hundred rupees from current levels. Is that fair to assume? Yeah, that is what I'm, you know, trying to tell. Yeah. Okay, so you're referring to the EBITDA calculations with the other income as well attached to it. But as you said, you're going to head to that level in the next six to nine months. Quick so word on the. Yeah. Yeah, we, Go we got that, sir. What about the yeah. volume picture? You know, I recall when you last joined us, you were talking about uh, volumes moving up by close to 12 to around 15 percent for FY23. Do you stick to that number? What should the volume growth be for yeah, FY23 yeah, as that. well as 24? Yeah. Yeah, we stick to that number. In fact, you know, last quarter also we have grown by more than 12 percent. And uh, uh, definitely, I think our growth, volume growth would be around 12 percent plus uh, in the FY23. And uh, Mr. Shukla, uh, for FY24, you'd uh, maintain that kind of run rate? Any any uh, thoughts? Uh, I think since I think our base will uh, be on a higher side, Hi. I think still I believe that we'll be growing at about, you know, uh, in double digit. 10% plus. Okay, 10% plus growth for FY24 and 12% for FY23. Can you give us a little bit of qualitative guidance on how the demand situation is on the ground? Where are you seeing triggers? Uh, where is the activity picking up now? So, uh, I think uh, you know, last quarter and even you know coming quarters are going to be good because you know uh, cement is uh, cyclical in nature and uh, uh, we are into you know uh, good you know demand months. Uh, right from today till about you know june uh, uh, 2023 mm. and uh, the kind of estimation which we have uh, done you know in terms of growth of uh, you know uh, demand uh, somewhere around you know 8 to 9% in fy24 that is what our estimation is and our Sorry. growth target is you know as i told you that you know will be growing more mm. than uh, you know 10 to 12% you know in coming year Okay, so 10 to 12 percent, and you're saying the industry growth could be around 8 to 9 percent in FY24. That is what, yeah, yeah. Got that, got that. Can you tell us a little bit about pricing as well? How is the situation? Has uh, pricing gone up compared to what we saw, say, a few months ago? Yeah, prices are inching upwardly, but I think I would not say you no know, prices have gone uh, up uh, significantly. If you compare with last quarter, which is September, December, uh, 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 July, September. Prices are almost flat. So realization-wise, I think uh, almost flat, one two percent higher than the previous quarter. And uh, uh, we see the prices will move a little bit, you know, upwardly in coming months. But uh, you know, price increase, uh, demand is going to be good. But price would be about, you know, maybe uh, two percent higher than what we have today. Okay, all right. Final question, Mr. Shukla. You know, there could be a booster shot coming for the entire cement industry because the finance minister is talking about pulling back on GST from around 28%. It could come down to around 18%. That'll be good news, right? So how do you see yeah, this yeah, panning yeah. out? It helps volumes, but prices as well will come down, right? Go ahead. 
so uh, yeah i think this is what uh, cement industry has been demanding from from the government because you know cement is one of the most consumed commodity and this is one of the i would say uh, pillars for development of india right, right. and uh, this commodity is being charged at 28% gst so hopefully i think 18th gst council is going to meet and they are going to revisit this gst rate over cement and if that you know goes down to 18% i hope that demand will definitely boost have a boost uh, and demand will increase uh, and uh, uh, you know of course i think to that extent maybe prices also will go down all right mm -hmm. uh, mr shukla thank you very much for your time good speaking with you and good luck uh, that's uh, jk lakshmi with uh, some perspective i think we're at the end of the pre open session uh, and uh, let's have the nifty up sudarshan and mitesh are with us with their 9 10 calls uh, sudarshan uh, why don't you tell us what is on your uh, radar Well, ONGC is a buy with a stop under one forty-three. Mitesh, what about you? I'll go with the buy on MGL. Keep a stop at eighty-eight. Targets of nine thirty to one nine thirty-five can be looked at. Okay, just a couple of stocks that I want to mention in pre-opening: um, ABB and uh, BHEL. Both those stocks are looking pretty good, actually. ABB is up in the green. Uh, BHEL as well, but by the way, there's a large trade on Coforge too. Nine point eight percent equity has changed hands in a block deal window. We were telling you about that earlier. Uh, so Coforge is down about six and a half odd percent. Uh, so these are just a couple of stocks that you should look at. Bal Krishna Industries as well, very weak set of earnings coming through for the company. The EBITDA has fallen seventeen percent. The margins have, uh, you know, compressed to nineteen percent versus twenty five percent same time last year. Profits have fallen seventy percent. and the company says that it is experiencing a channel inventory clearance in end markets and that could be one of the reasons why uh, you know there's been a deep pressure on the margins recession fears continue to hit demand and they are continuing to face challenges of destocking in q4 so not only in this quarter but in q4 as well they are expecting the weakness to continue so that is on bal krishna industries expecting uh, that stock to open in the red if we can just get the pre opening rates up for you not looking too good but vaishta is here she is okay that's a 10% knockdown on balkrishna industries so brace yourself for that but i was talking about abb and bhel so let's go across to vaishta to get the latest there vaishta over to you hi sonia thanks for that well abb india has released excellent set of numbers for the quarter gone by and this was a result of good execution for the domestic market as well as for the export customers the margin the expectation was 10.3% but the actuals have come in at 15% which means a 500 basis points jump over the estimates all segments have performed well there were large value orders in the industrial solutions and segments like data centers and the electrification segment as expected there has also been a sustenance of the order inflow momentum as well the order inflow for the entire calendar year of 2022 has crossed 10000 crores for the very first time now in terms of brokerage's view nomura has said that unusually strong ebitda margins have come in despite a uh, revenue missing nomura's estimates uh, nomura has a neutral rating on the stock with a target price of 3121 which is implying a 1% downside another brokerage uh, macquery says that there have been strong double digit ebit margins across all the segments this brokerage has an outperformed rating on the stock with a target price of 3129 but another stock that i'm also talking about today is bhel also the results have been good now though the revenues have come in below estimates but the operating level the company is profit making in fact ebitda margins have improved 100 basis points year on year to 2.7% the finance costs though were higher in this quarter all in all i would say good set of numbers in fact the management has also said that demand momentum is quite buoyant brokerages have divergent views uh first let me start with morgan stanley which has an underweight uh rating with a target price of 34 rupees and they have highlighted that that the downside risks are the further increase in the working capital also sluggish orders and weak demand but nomura has a neutral rating on the stock with a target price of 79 rupees and they say that execution ramp up is still elusive the recent orders appear to be at low gross margins which have come in at 25.5% which is significantly lower than the historic levels and macquery has an underperformed rating on bhel with a target price of 76 rupees they said they say that the execution continues to be subdued for the quarter and ordering was also low with Absolutely. no major thermal orders Okay. All right, uh, Vaisha. Thanks very much uh, for that. You know, uh, I'll take thirty seconds. Put out a chart for our viewers. Uh, this is Market Laser, and we highlight stocks which are uh, sort of poised interestingly. 
And the chart which will come up is of PB FinTech. This is Policy Bazaar. And, uh, you know, the uh, stock listed in November of 2021. And since then, as you can see in that chart, has been on a downward spiral. For the first time, I would say, since listing, uh, this is breaking out of this downward sloping trend line, which started somewhere in uh, December of 20, a month after uh, its listing. Uh, you know, I've, that's, a, that's the beginning of this particular trend line. And you can see various touch points uh, since then. And last Wednesday, that is, uh, you know, it, it broke out and it's now trading above it. So just a quick uh, kind of uh, view on PB FinTech. The market's opened, uh, Sonia, and mm. it's absolutely flat for now. I think on PB FinTech as well, right? I mean, it's a good set of numbers that the company has reported. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, the market is reacting to that. 1% higher on PB FinTech. Overall, for the opening, the first take is absolutely flat. So just consolidating around 17,850. Uh, in terms of individual stocks, uh, just keep an eye out on tech stocks. They're all under pressure this morning. Infosys, Wipro, Tech Mahindra are all in the red. Infosys is down about one odd percent. And then you have a couple of other heavyweights like HUL, HDFC, uh, BPCL is down in the red as well, and Coal India too, just a tad bit soft. On the upside, I was mentioning how Adani Group stocks have made a recovery, uh, staged a recovery last week, and that continues today. Adani Enterprises, ACC, Ambuja, Adani Ports, all up in the green this morning. M&M is surging up 1.5%. Uh, the numbers were very strong and a lot of positive brokerage views coming in as well. It's the top nifty gainer right now. More on that later. Bajaj Finserve, Bajaj Auto in the green. <coughs> Nestle, Titan, uh, ITC, a lot of FMCG stocks also holding up quite well. Hero Motocorp, Aishar. Aishar comes out with numbers tomorrow, so that one is uh, also up in the green, up about 3 tenths of a percent. And then you have uh, Tata Consumer, ICICI Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank that are also trending on the green line. So largely, you'd have to say it's a very, very quiet opening, just consolidating. The mid-cap index, though, is a tad bit in the red. Um, Coforge, IDFC, City Union, a couple of these stocks are under a lot of pressure. Uh, Nigel will take that forward. But largely, the headline index is just consolidating. Well, that's right, Tony. On IDFC, actually, it's gone ex-dividend. So that explains why the stock is down closer around 12%. Uh, Dodd, keep in mind, today it's gone ex-dividend. City Union Bank, that's getting a hard knock in today's trading session. It's down closer on 7% in reaction to its numbers. Lupin, for the second day running, well, that's coming for a bit of a clonk. It's not closer around 5%. Remember, the street didn't like part of their numbers. At the face of it, they look pretty good, but otherwise there were pockets uh, which the street didn't like, so that's down closer on 5%. Lupin uh, is lower. InfoRedge as well, Rima told us the set of numbers are quite weak, so that uh, is down closer on 4% as we speak. On the flip side, Oil India's numbers look absolutely splendid. You know, in a difficult quarter, they delivered good numbers, and now valuation-wise, there is some support out there, so that stock was up closer around 5% on Nalco. The numbers were better than what the street was working with. The problem is coal costs have gone up, and employee costs were sharply lower as well. So sustainability is going to be a question. But for the time being, those numbers were better than expected. So that's up close around a percent and a half. And we just spoke to the management of uh, JK Lakshmi Cement. Uh, they're talking about good volume growth for the coming quarters and also guiding that EBITDA per ton will improve by around 200 rupees odd, which is very, very encouraging. So that stock as well opens up well in the green. Well, it's a good start. That initial dip has got bought into. Mid-caps under pressure. But the Nifty Bank, well, that's up close around 50 points. And that's going to be the swing factor for the day. You know, let's have the Adani stocks up as well, uh, because I think uh, that's where uh, a lot of the focus has been. I can spot Adani ports and Ambuja, which are higher by about 1.5, between 1.5 to 2%. Uh, so those two names are up. Uh, but uh, Adani Enterprises, actually all three of these are higher. But there is Adani Transmission, which is uh, limit down 5, Green, which is down 5, and Adani Power, which is down 5. Actually, Adani Total Gas is also down 5. So you basically have about uh, four, uh, four down and uh, three up uh, from that uh, particular group uh, to begin the day. So that continues to uh, have uh, a fair bit of focus. Market breadth, it's too early to kind of say anything conclusively about, thing, about this, but based off it. But uh, for now, it's uh, a little less than two is to one. It was clear two is to one when we started, uh, but it's a little lower than that now. Uh, just a few more names. I highlighted Policy Bazaar. Uh, it started absolutely flat. It's, it's picked up. It's up 3%. It's the second largest volume-led gainer, PB FinTech. Uh, so that's about 16 rupees on it, a 543 on Policy Bazaar. Uh, there is uh, Galaxy Surfactants, uh, which should come up. It's up 7%. Uh, that's, uh, you know, got decent-sized volumes as well for this time of the day. India Cements is up about 2%. Again, decent-sized volumes. Oil India, we ho already highlighted. Uh, there is uh, Ingersoll Rand, which is up about 11 percent, 2174. Volumes are not that high, uh, but uh, it's something which is coming up. 
uh, on my list right now. Uh, what else? I mean, let's have uh, ID. Uh, what's happening with IDFC? Oh, it's yeah. a, it's an ex dividend. Ex, ex okay. Uh, so that's 78, uh, 77 odd rupees on IDFC. Delivery is starting down about 4%. Uh, that's, uh, you know, decent size volumes, 302 on uh, delivery. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, lots of names coming up. Nokri, let's have Info Edge up, uh, which, is, which also reported numbers, by the way. I think the IT segment there continues <laughs> to slow down. Uh, that's that's down another four and a half, five odd percent as well uh, at uh, this point in time. Fortis reported numbers, I think. That's down about three and a quarter percent. These are well-traded liquid names and uh, they're moving around. For the Nifty, it's about 20 odd points uh, or so right now. Just want to mention one thing. PB Fintech now volumes are going up as well. And over there, as we were telling you earlier, the EBITDA loss has come down substantially. So, you know, this path to profitability is something that we were talking about ad nauseum. EBITDA loss is just about 130 crores this time compared to a loss of over 300 crores. And it's also taken up the other stocks. So, Paytm has seen another 2% gain. Nika comes out with numbers today. That one is in focus as well. Delivery also. So, this whole, you know, theme of new age tech stocks yeah. continues to Although move. the joke, if, I don't know if you guys saw, it was uh, adjusted. EBITDA, EBITDA. adjusted. adjusted. <laughs> we spoke about it all day on Friday. On Friday. Right? I couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> All right, it gives itself to <laughs> I mean, a lot of joke making. Anyway, let's have Manishi Re Chaudhary uh, join us now. He's, of course, with BNP Paribas. Manishi, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, how, how are things looking, uh, Manishi? And let's just start with uh, your assessment of earnings. What's your India team telling you? How have earnings in the third quarter been like? Uh, have they been uh, uh, sort of worse off? I would imagine they've been worse off uh, as compared to your expectations. And what does it do to 24 estimates? Go on. Okay. Um, you see, if you look at it segment-wise or sector-wise, even within sectors, there's been a divergence as far as the earnings uh, you know, picture is concerned. Um, I would say broadly, the larger frontline private sector banks have done well. Um, IT has been a mixed picture with some companies doing well, some others disappointing. But we have had more consistent disappointments possibly from the consumer discretionary and the consumer staple space, right? So all in all, I would say India has turned out to be kind of a mixed bag with sort of a negative bias in this last quarter. And consequently, we have had earnings downgrades. If I look at it granularly, almost every sector within India, the consensus estimates have been downgraded over past one month and three months with one exception, and that's the banking universe. Financials have had an increasing earnings estimates over one month, three months, and six months. And that seems to be some kind of a beacon of hope as far as the Indian investment universe is concerned. All right. Uh, Oil India is really the stock of the moment. 8% higher and big volumes picking up on Oil India. As Sonal was telling us earlier, very good set of numbers. Net realizations for Oil India have picked up substantially. And there you go. Uh, that's the big stock move there. Manishi, good morning. Uh, you want to weigh in on the conversation we were having about the new age tech companies? Have Has your conviction there gone up or are you still a bit cautious? In our model portfolio, and we run an Asia X Japan model portfolio, we still don't have a representation from any of these companies. I think as long as we have cost of capital going up, you know, through both risk perception rising and through uh, the, you know, the, 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 the risk-free rates increasing, the pressure on the valuations of these new age companies would continue. These are the so-called long duration equity, the classic long duration equity where a very large part of the value is in the, uh, in the terminal value. And therefore, even tiny little changes in cost of capital impact their valuation disproportionately. And that is something investors would have to be wary about. Even though many of these companies have declined significantly, um, I think as long as we have upward pressure on cost of capital, investors should be really selective in this space. Okay, uh, have to be really selective. So, uh, you know, tactically or otherwise, uh, Manishi, what is your, uh, you said banking is the only space where you've seen upgrades. But I'm sure, uh, you know, you're, you're picking up ideas from uh, across the board. What's top of mind? What's top of the list uh, for you and your team right now? All right. So private sector banks, as I mentioned, mm. they clearly form the top of our asset allocation in, in the India silo of the Asian model portfolio. 
Apart from that, we have some exposure in um, consumer discretionary and in automobiles. Um, even though we have reduced that exposure in automobiles a bit since early December. And uh, we do have some exposure in IT and, um, you know, the conglomerates, both the ones in oil and gas, telecom, etc. Even though the IT exposure was also reduced significantly in early December. A couple of the sectors that we are avoiding right now, number one, consumer staples, where the valuations in the present circumstances and with the possibility of uh, you know a dampened consumption sentiment they don't really fit our bill and um, we don't have any exposure in the metals and mining space either okay in fact you were talking about it right uh, uh, kpit tech has hit a fresh high again this morning and it's been one of the strongest stocks this year in fact at 869 <gasps> On KPIT Tech, the stock is now up almost 25% in 2023. So let's just pull it up for you, KPIT Technologies. Uh, so Manishi, what do you do here in IT? You said that you're sort of nibbling in now. Uh, do you look at the large caps? Do you go to the mid-cap guys, the, maybe the companies that have an exposure to the fast-moving electric vehicle auto sector? What do you do here within tech? Right. So in Indian IT services, we had a significant exposure almost all throughout 2022. You know, and towards the later part of that year, many of the frontline stocks actually did quite well. But in early December 2022, we reduced that Indian IT exposure significantly while retaining some exposure to the frontline companies. We think that the deal flows in the IT companies are decent, but at the same time, we haven't seen a materialization of the risks that the developed markets face today, particularly the United States. Um, so that's why we are a bit concerned about that space. We think the concerns are possibly less than the tech hardware companies in Korea or Taiwan. But even in the Indian IT space, we have to watch out for deal flows and order flows to pick up a bit better in the you know, so-called consumption-orientated sectors. So, um, you know, that is actually our stance. And we are not really venturing into the lower tier stocks. Our focus, if you will, would possibly be concentrated in the top two or three names in the Indian IT service space. Mm. All right, Manishi, always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for stopping by and filling us in with your view on a whole host of sectors that we just discussed. But let's focus on another company, Honeywell Automation. Well, they posted yet another subdued set of numbers in terms of margins. Revenues grew, and that's heartening. Execution is picking up. The problem is on the margin front, which came in at multi-year lows. It was much lower than Numura's estimates as well, of around 18%. To understand what went on in the past quarter, and more importantly, what's the way ahead? Mr. Uh, Ashish Gaikwad, the MD of Honeywell Automation, joins us. Hi, Mr. Gaikwad. Good morning. Uh, the last time you were telling us, no crystal ball gazing, but we'd like to know some bit of, uh, you know, a way ahead and some kind of a path out there. So let's get straight to it. Execution's improved. That's heartening. The problem is margins. And, uh, you know, I want to focus on two aspects. One is, on the export side of things, has there been a change in the pricing model with the parent, point number one? Or is the problem on the domestic side? When you're executing some of these smart city projects, has there been, uh, you know, some skimming off on margins on that front? Please go ahead, sir. Tell us why the margins were so depressed. Well, good morning, Nigel, and thanks for having me on your show today. Let's look at the positives first uh, in the quarter, Nigel, if you allow me. Number one is... Uh, we have uh, posted 18% uh, increase in the PBT and also the PAT, right, uh, in the absolute terms. Um, also, if you see, this quarter is a record quarter. I'm talking about the October to December. So first time in the history of this company, we've crossed a 1,000 crore revenue mark, right? So that's positive as well. And when you look at the YTD margins, the three quarters uh, margins, uh, they have shown some improvement. Of course, for the particular quarter of uh, October to December, I agree with you that uh, we could have done better. Gross margins have dipped a little bit, maybe about 20 bips. Um, and uh, that is a combination of a few things. Number one, uh, we still are burning the backlog from FY21 and 22. And as I had discussed with you in our previous conversations, the margins had been uh, suppressed, and we continue to see that. 
The second, mm -hmm. uh, of course, is the mix. Uh, the kind of mix that we are getting in the market, uh, you know, we, we have to juggle that better and we will continue to look for opportunities. And the third thing is inflation. It's not still gone away. It continues to surprise us and we need to find better ways to deal with the inflation. Coming back to your uh, other part of the question, Nigel, that are yes. there any changes in uh, the exports uh, related uh, pricing? No, there yes. is no change. We continue okay. to have the same. But yes, there are margin pressures on the domestic large uh, programs that we have undertaken in the past. Sure. Mr. Uh, Mr. Backward, uh, sorry, just one thing. Uh, actually, two. Uh, you know, you said uh, profits are up 18%, but that's largely uh, on account of other income, right? Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a boost from the other income front, one. And two, you said gross margins are down 20 basis, around 20. I thought uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, they're down almost, uh, I mean, they're down what, 600, 650 basis points on a year-on-year -year uh, basis? No, uh, if you look at, uh, yeah, of course, gr gross margins have gone down. You're right. Yes. But when you look at the BIPs uh, at the PBT and PAT levels, it's about uh, 90 BIPs up or 120 BIPs up at the PAT level. So we continue to look for opportunities to get the net profits uh, healthier. And it's a trend. Uh, we suffered a dip, as we discussed in the past uh, discussions, uh, but now we see some uptick coming up. I think the big question is that uh, will there be more pressure in margins before that uptick comes through, right? Uh, because, uh, I mean, it's a three-year low that you're sitting at. And it's not like the margins have fallen by a tad bit. I mean, it's at 12.8%. It's a big fall uh, over 330 basis points compared to last quarter. So do you think, is there a possibility that the margins could fall further? If they do, is there a possibility it could go to single digits as well before recovering? Uh, well, uh, we are absolutely trying our level best to make sure that we are driving all the things that are in our hands, uh, which is essentially the productivity part, uh, the cost control, and also choosing the healthy orders and the mix uh, in our uh, orders that are in the pipeline, right? So mm -hmm. I, I see that we will manage that well, and we will try to get the trend, uh, which is already upwards when you look at YTD level, uh, to keep going in that direction. But are there still some more low profitability orders that have to be executed in the remainder part of the fiscal, which could put further pressure on margins in Q4? Well, I, these are long cycle uh, orders in the backlog. So some of them could be a little bit, uh, you know, challenging. But we do have mm -hmm. ways to mitigate some of those risks in the backlog okay. uh, while choosing the healthy uh, front log uh, in the okay. pipeline. All right. Mr. Gaikwad, you know, we need some more color here. Uh, I'm going to try to get uh, more out of you. Have margins bottomed out? Have margins bottomed out? You know, just, uh, I mean, not too long ago, you were doing margins in the high teens. Now you're doing margins in the other side of the teens, you know. So will we get to the high teens margins, say, in the next three, four quarters? Is that the plan? And have margins bottomed out? So as you know, um, for Honeywell Automation, there is a healthy mix of the domestic orders and the exports. And you asked that question uh, earlier yes. on. Um, yes. we we have a cost advantage, as you know, uh, from our engineering exports perspective. But what we are pivoting to now is not just um, depend on the cost arbitrage, uh, but also the skills development. And there are new skills in the economy that is developing. Uh, see, we are tethered to uh, the growth in North America, West Europe, and Middle Mr. East. Mr. Gaikwan. You know, you, you know, Mr. Gaiko, the street would just like to know at least a directional call on the margins. Uh, do you think that they will improve from year on, maybe in the next two quarters, three quarters? But, uh, you know, with the kind of measures that you all have taken, with the mix, with the selection of orders, do you believe that, in fact, margins will trend higher from year on? And also, what is the color with regard to FI24? Going by the orders that you've already secured, what kind of a growth can we look at? Go ahead, sir. That, that's where I was going, Nigel, that mm. when we look at uh, the, these three large regions from where we get the exports uh, business, I think Middle East is, is still looking good, right, which is a good mm. news. Um, West Europe, you know the situation there. And North America, it's kind of bracing itself, but we still see, uh, you know, not too much of an impact from there. So I'm very optimistic uh, about the export side. The second thing, when you talked about FY24, uh, look at the budget. You know, there is a large uh, mm. CapEx boost that has come in, and our company depends quite a lot on the CapEx that goes into the industrial and the infrastructure mm -hmm. sector. Uh, 
The second thing which is very healthy is uh, specific skills in pharma life sciences, in the new energy transition which uh, the country is going through. Uh, we are developing the solutions as well as the skills in those areas. And I'm very, very optimistic about it. And the previous trend that I have discussed with you, which is industrial digital uh, digitalization, as well as cybersecurity, they are gaining traction uh, all the way through. So therefore, yes, I am cautiously optimistic about the margins as well. Can you give us, okay, cautiously optimistic on the margins. So you're saying that there could be some, pre some more pressure in Q4. Uh, can you give us the number for the export orders? What is the nine month FY23 export order book like? And you said that Middle East is seeing a bit of a pickup, but Europe is still a challenge. Uh, so do you think exports could worsen in Q4? Uh, well, they will not worsen uh, and they are uh, growing at a healthy single digit rate right now. It's in the mm. range of about 7 to 9%. And we would okay. like to focus on specific areas now so that we can make it better. But uh, that, that's what I can give you at this point in time. What about the order inflow, sir? For the nine months, what has been the order inflow growth uh, on a year-in-year -year basis? And exports, since you're seeing some traction out there, uh, I recall I've quizzed you in the past as well. Do we see exports getting back to around 1,300, 1,400 crores in the coming year? So one is on the order inflow and then on the exports revenue guidance. Very quickly, and then we'll wrap this up. Sure. So the, firstly, um, the order intake has been a little muted. I would say about 6, 6.5% right now YTD, mm. which is at the rate of GDP, right? And the reason for that is we've been extremely careful right. after the pandemic on looking at the quality of the orders, the cash flow, the margins, the exact question that you are asking me. Uh, coming back uh, to whether we will get to those levels that you mentioned, 1,300, 1,400 crores, again, like I said, you know, uh, it'll be speculative, but we are doing actions that will get us more share of the pie. Uh, Got out it. There. Got it, Mr. Gaikot. We leave it there. Thank you very much and uh, good luck. We'll speak with you soon again. Appreciate you joining in. It's always a pleasure having you with us here on the uh, program, on the channel as well. You know, the market slipped a bit. We're down 50 now. We were absolutely flat for the first 10 minutes or so. There was hardly anything, but now it's a firm 50-point cut at about 17,800 uh, is where we find ourselves at. Oil India, though, is having no such problems. It is up uh, some 7-8% last we checked. Sonal is here to revisit the numbers for us. Sonal. A well, strong set of numbers, Prashant, and that's the reason why the stock is higher in trade, and this despite the clamour and the imposition of windfall taxes as well. So to run you through the numbers, revenues came in at 5400 crore rupees versus 46-43 crore rupees. EBITDA was higher by almost 1000 crore rupees at 28-55 crores. Margins, a substantial jump there, 53.1% versus 39.8%, and profits were flat, but that was because of a lower other income element as well. Net oil realization came in at $77.1 per barrel, which is higher on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. And uh, this despite the imposition of windfall taxes, so that is a positive. The Numaliga refinery that the company had acquired, uh, the expansion there is expected to be completed by FY24 or FY25. The capex here is 28,000 crore rupees, and it will be funded 70% via debt and 30% via equity. Motilal Oswal has a buy rating on the stock with a target price of 272 rupees per share. They like the fact that uh, the windfall taxes, they are imposed in a way that the net realization is between 68 to $81 per barrel, which is okay with the government. So that's definitely a positive. ICICI Securities has gone ahead and increased estimates by 18 and 13 percent for next two financial years. Gas realizations and GRMs for Numaligar refinery remain above historical trends and the valuation support definitely at 4.4 times uh, FI25 EPS, that is what they have introduced this time, is something that provides support to the stock as well. Uh, Sonal, thanks very much uh, for that. You know, the broader market is also looking a little poorer. Uh, so when we started, uh, it was two is to one, clean advances to declines, but now it's actually the, it's reversed. And we are barely in the uh, sort of crossing over beyond the first 30 minutes of trade. Let's have the NSE advanced decline, and you'll be able to see uh, what I'm talking about. A complete reversal. 1,100 stocks are lower, 800 stocks are higher uh, as far as the market breadth uh, is concerned. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and that is not such a, a good-looking picture for the broader universe as well. The Nifty, of course, is still down 50 points. We'll take a break. We are back. More on the other side. We have a very special conversation with the manager.